Ladies and gentlemen, I have a patient with me who is suffering from polyneuropathy and uh, this is a sensory motor neuropathy. Just to differentiate between a neuropathy and a myopathy, there is a rule of thumb. If you have distal weakness which is bilateral and symmetrical and progressive, this has to be a neuropathy. And if you have a proximal weakness which is symmetrical and bilateral, this is usually a myopathy. Now, myopathy means disease of the muscle, neuropathy means disease of the nerve. Now, this being a case of a neuropathy, the distal muscles are the muscles of the hand and the muscles of the feet. If you look at his muscles, you can see the wasting, you can see the deformity. Can you do like this? Do like this? No, he can't. Now, this shows that the weakness of the intrinsic muscles of the hand or the smaller muscles of the hand are there and you can see subsequently the deformity also. Similarly, if you look at his feet and if you look at the shape of the feet, this again, there is a pescavis. Now, pescavis is this high arch and as a result of the weakness of various muscles, he has developed extension, flexion deformities of his fingers and toe. Apart from that, if I touch him, if I touch him, apart from that, he has some degree of sensory loss also. And if you really want to confirm in all patients who are suffering from a neuropathy, it is mandatory to ask the patients and go for a test. This is Rombok test. Aankhe band karo. Now he tends to fall. Usually people have a misconception that Rombok test is done for cerebellar disease. At undergraduate level, most of the doctors, they think that cerebellar disease, you know, in cerebellar disease, we do the Rombok test. But Rombok test basically is to check your dorsal column. So therefore, uh, that confirms that there is a loss of position also or a problem in the dorsal column. Now quickly, for such a patient, there are three tips. The tip for his education, the tip for his treatment and the tip for his livelihood. For the treatment, we cannot cure the disease but we can prevent the deformities and deformities can be prevented by the use of these kind of splints. These are night splints. The patient at least would have a delay in developing these deformities if we cannot control it altogether. Similarly, we can use this AFO if the patient falls frequently because normally when he walks, his foot is dropped and he can tumble anywhere. He can just uh, fall down. So that would uh, help him. But there should be a judicial use of this AFO. I personally as a rehab consultant suggest that as long as patient can walk without this, this should not be given. It should only be given once the patient is completely unable to walk. Now coming on to the special education. Well, the very simple and uh, straightforward message is such people, boys or patients should not go to a special education center. They must be mainstreamed. They should go to normal school. They should have a normal schooling and the parents and the teachers should try to give more emphasis on their higher education. They should not go for vocational training. They cannot do vocational training because they have a problem with their hands. So therefore, they should go for like graduation and post-graduation and even for PhDs and doctorate. Why not? Because they have a, they're lively, to have a better livelihood, they, they need to be empowered educationally. They can get married and if a question of getting married is concerned, they should try not to get married within the family. Perhaps due to the reason that this is a genetically transmitted disease. As far as what kind of a job they can do, I think they should go for sitting job, white collar sitting job, mostly computer operated job consultancies, 
places where they, they don't have to make a lot of mobility. And even if at some stage they have to be on a wheelchair, they can yet be scientists, managers, or any higher place in society. I wish you best of luck. Thank you very much.